2024 is supposed to be my low buy year, but on January 1st of 2024, I went out shopping and I wanna share with you guys what that experience was like. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Melissa and as you guys can see, I absolutely love luxury. But in 2024, I want to have a low buy year. I have plenty of stuff and I don't need to add a lot, but that doesn't stop my love for luxury. So I decided on January 1st, I was off and my husband was off to go spend the day out shopping and try on some of my wish list bags and bags that just have simply been on my radar and I want to share that experience with you and share with you guys what bags I tried on. My first stop was Gucci and this is 100% due to Minnie from Minx for All. You guys, she recently got this little Gucci bag and it is so cute. I will have the name of each bag and the price point popped up on the screen for you guys just so that I don't mix up any of the names or the price points. But when I saw this bag, I went on to Gucci's website and I checked it out and I saw the price point and I saw that it was under $2,000 and I thought, you know what, this would be a really good bag to add to my collection. It's completely different. It's Gucci canvas. So let me go in store and try it on. So I did just that. I went in store and I tried it on. And as you guys can see here in this clip right here, it's a really cute bag. It's small, it's compact, but I felt like it bulged out just a little bit too far from my hips. Top handle, I loved it, but in 2024, we're being more selective. And so I knew that this bag wasn't going to be, good, be a good choice for me because it does pop off of my hip just a little bit too much. But while I was in there, I came across this little tote bag. Again, this bag was at a reasonable price as well. It was under the $2,500 price point. And I've been really interested in a tote style bag. I like the shape and size of the Marc Jacobs bag, which I have tried on several times as well. And I will pop that up on the screen for you guys if I still have that footage. But it was one of those things that I don't like where it, ha it has the big tote bag on there, so I have never purchased it, but I have considered it many times. So when I came across this Gucci tote bag, I thought this is perfect. I went ahead and I tried it on. I felt like it looked really, really cute on me. And my old mindset definitely would have purchased that bag that day. But if I'm being honest with you guys, the handles felt quite cheap. And on the display model, the glazing had some scratches on it already. So I felt like the quality just wasn't there, especially for the price point. It's a really cute bag. It seems like it's really, really functional. And if I find this bag for a really good deal on the pre-loved market, I might go for it one day. But on this specific day, I decided to pass on it. The next place I stopped by is Louis Vuitton and I had tons of bags that I wanted to try on. Some of them were not available for me to try on and I'll mention those shortly, but the bag that I was most excited to try on was the side trunk in the PM size. So I went ahead and I tried that bag on and I have to be 100% honest with you guys, I was pretty underwhelmed by the bag and I think it's more so the fact that I'm really tired of Louis Vuitton monogram or Louis Vuitton canvas in general. I like the Dami Azur, but they don't have the side trunk in Dami Azur yet. I've heard rumors that it's supposed to come out. So when I tried it on, I was a little bit underwhelmed, but I did notice a few things that are really good about the bag and I wanted to share those with you. First of all, the bag is extremely lightweight and I wasn't expecting that. It's very comfortable to wear crossbody and top handle. I did feel like it looked a little bit bulky uh, on my frame wearing a cross body. I will say I definitely wore the wrong outfit to go out shopping this day. I wore something very oversized and very, very me, but it's something that wasn't necessarily the best as far as seeing the bag and showcasing the bag. The outfit kind of took over, I felt like. But then I tried on the PM size in the side trunk, you guys. I was not expecting to like the PM size as much as I do. 
For me personally, I think it fits or it looks a lot better on my frame than the larger size. I did do an Insta or a YouTube shorts sharing with you guys what both of them look like. And almost all of you guys said you like the bigger one better. I'd have to disagree. I like the smaller one better. I think it's really cute. It fit really well on my frame. A huge downfall I'd say about the smaller one is the price point. The smaller one is 3,500 and the larger one is 3,800. So it's only a $300 price point. But one pro I wanted to share with you guys is that, that it does fit the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now I didn't check to see what else fit in there, but with my iPhone, I imagine that a compact card holder, your phone, your key pouch, and maybe another small item is going to fit in there very comfortably, very easily. It has a lot of room for such a small little bag. The next bag that I asked to try on was the Graceful MM. And unfortunately, my sales associate told me that they are discontinuing it and they didn't have any in store. He did look to see if there's anything around us where I could order it and there unfortunately wasn't. I was pretty disappointed to hear that they are discontinuing it. And even my sales associate seemed surprised because he said, Said that they don't have very many hobo style bags so the fact that they are discontinuing the graceful mm which is sort of a classic it's been around for a long time and it is a hobo style bag and it's still kind of asked for somewhat frequently according to him he was pretty surprised that it was discontinued as well so if you guys are interested in the graceful mm definitely pick it up or any of the graceful series pick it up as soon as possible because they are discontinuing it the next bag that I asked to try on was the Sumar. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but of course I will pop it up on the screen for you guys. I recently came across this bag and I thought it was really, really cute, but I saw a video on it and the video that I saw, I will try to link it down below for you guys. She showed what fit inside and hardly anything fit inside. So I was more so wanting to see this bag to see what fits inside. And I did check to see what fits inside and you can fit a mini pochette inside a key clay inside and your um, card holder inside and that's it those are the three items that are going to fit inside if you choose to use your mini pochette and they fit comfortably and it closed very easily with those three items inside and then you can slip an iphone 13 pro max the big size in the back pocket you guys those are my only four essentials other than my sunglasses which i can just simply pop on my head so the fact that this bag is so cute it's little i thought it was very flattering on my frame is definitely a contender for me in the future as to whether or not I'm going to purchase this bag. It's also at a very reasonable price point in my opinion. Now the one thing that held me off from buying this bag, well two things. One, I'm on my low buy year and I'm not supposed to buy anything yet. But the second thing is the fact that I really don't want any more Louis Vuitton canvas. And the one that I liked the most was the canvas. So I did try it on in black and preant leather, or I'm sorry, um, black, what kind of leather is that? epi leather black epi leather and i tried it on in the monogram canvas and i like the monogram canvas better but i'm really trying not to add any more monogram or brown canvas to my collection i have quite a few brown canvas bags and i don't need any more when I asked my sales associate to try on the Sumar bag, he also brought out this other bag. I believe it's called the Croset or Croissant. Croissant. I'm probably, again, pronouncing that wrong. And he just brought it out for me to try it on. Now, looking at this bag, I instantaneously knew that this bag wasn't for me. But once I put it on my body, I felt like it was really a flattering shape for the woman's body. It has that little divot that kind of frames your hip or the dip in your waist really well i thought it was really cute i thought it was really comfortable and it is a good option for anybody out there it holds quite a bit it's a good size it's just a big open pocket inside so i wanted to share it with you guys even though it's not necessarily a bag that's on my radar now the last two bags that i asked to try on he didn't have either one of them in store and it made me really really disappointed because these are two bags that are top on my wish list and that is the Noe BB with the drawstring. He had the, the typical Noe BB and I don't believe I got any footage of it because I just wasn't interested in it. The one with the little pull tab, the newer version. 
he did have that, but he didn't have the old school in the way BB where you have to tie it up and pull the drawstring. And he also didn't have the petite Noe in store. And I really, really wanted to try on the petite Noe. I have tried on the Noe BB and I'll put that footage up for you guys to see in a pre last year, actually almost a year ago to date, but he didn't have it in store today. And I wanted to compare the two and I really wanted to try on the petite Noe. Now I have owned the Petite Noe in the Epi Leather before and I went ahead and sold it because back then I wasn't into organizers and I had a very hard time finding my items out of there. So I know that I like the shape on my body frame and I know that I like the size, but I really just wanted to try it on in comparison to the BB. Have one on one side, one on the other side and see which one I like better. So you guys let me know, you saw the footage, you see which how they both look on my frame. Hopefully I was able to find a picture of the Petite Noe on my frame to share with you guys. Um, but let me know what do you guys think. Would you go for the Noe BB or would you go for the Petite Noe? I am looking for something that's very big, very practical. I can dump everything inside of there. I can fit my A5 binder inside of there. Something more so a work bag or a casual weekend bag. And I really like a shoulder bag, which is where I'm torn because the BB size is really cute, but it has that crossbody strap. Whereas the petite size is a little bit larger, but it has the shoulder strap. So that was the end of my shopping trip. And I have to say at the end of my shopping tri trip, my wish list for 2024 has slightly changed. There are a couple bags that I'm really interested in. And I am going to talk about it now here because I already did a wish list video for 2024. I'm going to do it rapid fire. I'm not going to make it drag out too long. So a couple bags that are now added to my wish list are the Mulberry Mini Alexa the celine belt bag i really like that bag i saw it in store i didn't get any footage of it but it seems like a very good bag as far as capacity and size it has the top handle the cross body holds all of the everyday essentials and it comes out in beautiful colors and both of those bags are at a very good price point so those are two bags that have been added to my wish list for 2024. now a bag that has been taken off of my wish list i think you guys might be a little bit surprised is the side trunk unfortunately for $3,800 you guys I need to be blown away by the bag and it could have been just my outfit that I was wearing I was having a very down day if I'm being honest I was really stressed out about going out shopping on the first day of my low by year I felt like I was kind of torturing myself but at the same time I wanted to see these bags and have time to think them over and I had the day off to spend with my husband so I was really doing a battle in my mind of whether or not I should go so that and the fact that I was on my lady time and the fact that I was feeling bloated and uncomfortable and I couldn't find anything that really resonated with my style I was just having an off day so I do need to go back in store and try on the side trunk again but I have a good feeling that the side trunk is just going to be off of my wish list. I don't like the canvas. I don't want anything else in canvas. And I really didn't like the leather versions either. And the new version that I thought I was going to want, I didn't like the starkness of the vaquetta versus the black leather versus the very light canvas. So they're going to have to come out with a different version of the side trunk in order for that to be added to my wish list. Now a couple bags that stayed on my wish list. I still want the Chanel 19 and as I keep on saying, I'm speaking it into existence, I have a good feeling that the Chanel 19 will be added to my collection this year. Another bag that is still on my wish list is either the Petite Noe or the Noe B. B. So those are the two bags that stayed on my wish list. Another bag that keeps going on and off is the puzzle bag, but I think it's too similar to the side trunk and I think that I wouldn't end up being happy with that purchase. One last bag that I keep on going back and forth on is the saddle bag. Half of you guys tell me I should get it and half of you guys tell me it's the worst purchase ever. So I'm going back and forth on it. I do think that the saddle bag will end up in my collection one day, but probably not today or this year. 
So to wrap up this video, how did I feel going out shopping on my low buy gear? I have to say it was a very different experience and I wanna share with you guys why. When you change your mindset and you tell yourself you can only have three bags in an entire year, you look at bags or I look at bags, I should be talking about myself here, I look at bags completely differently. If I can only buy three bags in the year, they really need to be really good, perfect bags that I'm really, really excited about. And so it really changed my shopping experience quite a bit because I was looking for a bag that really made me excited and I think that's a really good thing and it's a, a mindset that I want to adapt in the future because if you have that mindset of it needs to be perfect I'm spend, spending luxury money or not perfect but it needs to be something that you're really really excited about then you are less likely to make shopping mistakes and I've made several of those in the past and I've sold on bags and I've lost quite a bit of money so I think that this mindset is going to be really really good for me in the future. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. But until next time, I am going to leave my low buy series right here for you guys to check out in case you're interested in what are my low buy rules for 2024.